Hey y'all, it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone 8 garden and today we are out in the hot, hot sun. We're going to be making some repairs to some drip lines that I have throughout my property. Drip lines that go to all of my lawns, to all my grass. Then we're also going to be doing a little pruning on the front porch and then we're going to go inside and plant up some new begonia tubers. Okay, so I recently had a ton of work done um, where I had a French drain installed through the back of the house. And when that happened, we did have some damage um, from the construction workers on some of our lines that go and feed all of our grass areas. So I've gone through the process. I've already fixed three. Um, I have at least one here, maybe one over there and one over there. And how we figured this out is basically my husband and I, once a month, we turn on all the sprinklers and we walk with each other through each of the zones of our sprinklers just to check because it is quite normal to have some issues, um, especially if you're keeping a lawn that's all trimmed up and stuff. So weed whackers, if, you know, if your lines aren't deep enough. And so anyway, we were walking through this here this month. We were like, oh my gosh, and there is a lot this time. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some simple ways to fix it because a lot of people I think immediately turn to a sprinkler company spring, um, some kind of sprinkler company or a plumber and this is actually some very easy fixes that you can take care of yourself and that you can literally take care of for less than 50 cents so let me show you what's going on here and I'll actually show you guys the French drain too in a minute so uh, this is one of my lines and it's a um, drip line so it has emitters every 12 inches and it goes down this like little whole strip of grass which I actually don't care about I want to pull up the strip of grass place with something else but you can actually see let me get in way closer you can actually see that big gash right there and that was just shooting out water so what we want to do is we want to cut this gash out and we're going to put a straight line coupler to put the piece back together so let me show y'all what that's going to look like Okay, and of course I forgot to press play. But basically what I did is I took my pruners and I cut out the little sliver that had a cut in it, just like that. And I used a straight line coupler to attach the two ends back together. Just make sure that's a good connection. So there it's connected back like that. So it's good to go. Easy fix, literally less than five minutes. Okay, over here, the line that feeds my, um, that feeds my um, willow tree got cut. Basically, they had to cut some of the roots in order to install the French drain, and that in turn cut the pipe, and I need to reattach the pipe back together. So I have a swing pipe coupler. I keep forgetting to leave my gloves on. I just loathe wearing gloves so much. It's a sensation thing. I just don't like the feel of them on my hands. So basically I just need to use the coupler to go ahead and put the two of these back together. Just like that. And then I just need to use some pins, landscape pins, to put this back in place over here at the base of the tree. Do you think it's easier said than done? <laughs> I might have to come in with a hammer. I'll get my husband to do that later. But at least it's connected and I can run my sprinklers. It's hot. But the view's still pretty. Um, I saw some of my roses that need to be pruned real quick. Let's go do that. Okay, we have an America climbing rose right here. And you can see the blooms are supposed to be this color. These older blooms are bleached out by the sun. But they're all bloomed out, so now it's time to trim it back. 
So basically I'm going to grab onto the head and I'm going to look at the leaves and I see a set of three, a set of three leaves and a set of five. I'm going to cut right above the set of five, the first set of five, three, 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 five. And just cut the buds off. This will encourage the plant to grow fuller and larger. Okay, and I'm probably making a poor choice right now because I'm so hot already. <laughs> but that's okay. May, um, the next thing I need to do is in the shade. So these are all my heirloom mums, and it is time for them to be cut back. And when I say cut back, we're gonna cut off all the stems to about six inches above the ground. We're not cutting up all the way to the base of the plant. I'm not super particular when I do this, but the reason for doing this is that we want these guys to really focus and start growing blooms for the fall. And they can't do it if they've got all of this old stuff on there. So I'm literally just going through with my pruners and I can actually see a lot of the new growth on these. Let me finish this one and I'll pull y'all in closer to some other ones. And these chrysanthemums are in the backyard and they face south, but they get afternoon shade from my porch that's directly to my left. So I'm trimming them back just like that. And this will really help them put on new plans for the year. Okay, I had to take my phone in and put it in the refrigerator because <laughs> it got overheated. But you can see I cut back the mum significantly. The larger ones I cut just at the level of those peony hoops that I have supporting them because it was just easier. I couldn't get my hands underneath those. And then I cut back the um, I think that's a viburnum. I can't recall. I cut back the viburnum as well that was shading out some of the mums. And then what I need to do, I'm not gonna do it right now because y'all, it's rough out here. Um, I do need to hit this up with some liquid fertilizer and I need to consistently fertilize them over the next few months so that we will have beautiful blooms for the fall. All right, let's head to the front porch. Guys remember those containers I planted up? <laughs> I'm gonna put up some video or a picture just to remind you the size they used to be compared to now. This is insane. So we need to cut these back and they need to be cut back significantly um, just so that they don't start breaking but then also, we want to encourage more branching down low. <clears throat> so I'm really just going in and I'm looking to find a set of two leaves that has maybe some sprouts coming off of it. And then I'm just going to kind of start from there. Getting these trimmed up. 
and they're not going to look super great, y'all. <clears throat> Starting out here. And that's because we're cutting off all of the outermost foliage. That's going to be, you know, it's all the pretty part. But give them a couple of weeks, especially with, in regards to coleus. That should be great. And these, a bunch of these are those Kong coleus I told you guys about. They are very, very happy. <laughs> they really like their space. And down here, I've got a bunch of the double up begonias. We're going to give them a nice haircut as well. Encourage them to branch out and fill in the space again. Y'all, the intensity of these is next level. I'm very pleased at how well they've done. start to see the plants again. <laughs> and now I'm taking off a lot. But these plants have a whole lot of summer left, y'all. Summer came super early this year for us. <clears throat> and these guys are gonna have to go through some serious, slightly hot weather. We haven't even gotten to the bad part yet, which is saying a lot, right? this massive branch that's going to come off. It's one branch. Got grasshoppers heading, uh, hanging out over here. That's no good. When I do my liquid fertilizer, I'll hit this up. I know this is brutal, y'all. It's going to be better for it in the long run, though. That's a lot of plant for these little containers to support during super hot times. And they're getting so large, they're starting to fall over and break anyway. So this allows me to make strategic cuts that will help the plant over time. Well, that's brutal. <gasps> it's okay. Be good for them. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take a shower. <clears throat> and then we are going to do some begonias. We're gonna plant up some begonia tubers that I got on clearance or on a really good sale from, I can't recall, I'll have to look. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I got a shower, went to Chick-fil-A with my kids, we're good to go. All right, so what I wanna go ahead and do now is I have several tuberous begonias that I want to go ahead and get started. And I did start some of these earlier in late winter and spring, and they did great. And I've just really discovered a love for begonias, especially in my shade garden. And so I do want to start some more varieties. And what I will also be doing um, later on in the fall is I'm going to be pulling up all my existing um tuberous begonias and I'm going to be overwintering all of them and I will be doing a video on that when the time comes and some of y'all have suggested I do it maybe a little bit earlier since um, I don't really run into like fall and winter so like December trip well December is winter like that's the first of our winter and so I might do it a little bit earlier maybe in October or something like that so that those of y'all who have our cooler season can see the process but 
I ended up picking up these begonias for super inexpensive. I can't remember which company I got them for. I'll put it down below. But I have four different varieties. So let me show you what these look like. Now it's just far too hot to put these begonias outside for right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and start them inside and then perhaps get them planted out in the fall. So basically I'm just going to open this up and these are my two tubers. This tuber doesn't look super great, pretty small, but you can both see that they have sprouts on them, which is awesome. You can also see where their roots are underneath. So super simple. I just really got these for just a few dollars, not expensive at all. So let me show you what this process looks like. All right, so I'm just going to use one of these quart containers. And I'm just going to fill this eh, about three-fourths of the way. Firm it up a little bit, a little bit more. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my begonia and I'm just going to put it right there. And then I'm going to cover it with about an inch of soil over the top of it. This process is super simple and easy. And then once I get these all planted up, I'll put these in a container, water them, and put them under my grow lights and allow them to grow there until I'm ready to plant them outside. Okay, so one more time on that. I'm just using a basic potting soil. This is my Burger BM7 that I love. I'm going to firm it up a little bit. And I'm not putting any kind of additional fertilizer in here this time. I'm putting my begonia tuber in there. And then just coming over the top with it. I'm not like packing the soil hard, but just firmly, just like that. And then the fertilizer aspect will be, I'll be feeding this with Alaskan fish emulsion um, once I see the green start to come out the top. Okay, so I've got them all in here. I've got them in a tray and I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the reservoir. Pretty full, almost all the way, probably 75, 80% of the way because these will be soaking up a lot of water and I'll need to come check on them later as well. And then I'll just put them under my grow lights and let them go. Now over here are a bunch of stuff from, um, Blew some perennials that I screwed up on while I was out of town. I forgot about them. Literally forgot about them. So a lot of them died. Or at least I think they died. <laughs> so I cut some of them back. I'm going to see if I get anything back from them. Some of them are holding on and coming back. We'll see. Yeah, but that's a lot of money out the door that I screwed up on. It is what it is. But anyway, um, so basically I'll just put these under my lights and then probably come August, September, I should be able to start planting these out. These were really fun to incorporate in some of my containers for fall containers on my um, front porch and in the shade garden, which will be absolutely beautiful. All right, you all, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video kind of following along with just a number of smaller things that need to be done in the garden, including uh, doing some work on some of my drip lines that irrigate my lawn, um, working on the drip lines that irrigate my willow tree, doing some pruning on the roses and the heirloom chrysanthemums, and then some harsh pruning on the containers on the front porch and then coming inside and planting up these begonia tubers. All right, you all, as always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you're doing in your garden. Um, if you're in the hot, hot areas like me, let me know what you're doing or if you're not doing anything at all. And for those of you in my northern gardeners who are just getting to summer, let me know what's up in your garden and all the beautiful things that are growing there. And be sure to check me out on my social media outlets, including Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.